Perfect. Perfect. What is going on everybody? RB here, Philly Tick with RB and you guys know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button for me. Hit the subscribe if you're new and ding that notification bell so you're instantly notified whenever I upload or go live. Today we are back discussing some more Philadelphia 76ers potential selections at pick 21 in the upcoming draft. I can't believe we're just five days away. It's crazy to me. I mean the season just ended and it is already here. A lot going on. It's about to ramp up and I cannot wait for this draft to see what the Sixers are going to do here on this channel. We've already broken down what would probably be my top three potential selections in Desmond Bain, Tyrell Terry, and Cole Anthony. We even did Aaron Neesmith, so go ahead and check those out if you have not yet. Today, I want to talk about some other players, um, pretty much what would be my alternatives if these three guys that I just mentioned are not there at pick 21. Where do the Sixers go? What do they do? A lot of people, shout out to everybody that's been commenting down below. You guys have been throwing a ton of names at me. And these are really the next five that I would look for in, in certain areas, whether we got to trade up back or whether they're just available. Maybe these guys, you know, fell back from the lottery, you know, into the early 20s. Maybe they climbed all the way up from the early second round or the, the late first round up into the early 20s. These are, these are kind of the next tier of guys that I'm looking at. So the first guy we're going to take a look at today is Tyrese Maxey, a freshman guard, can play the one or two guard out of the University of Kentucky. Tyrese Maxey stands at six foot three inches, 198 pounds. And this kid has been mocked um, really in that mid to late part of the first round, has climbed up a lot of draft boards over the last couple months. And a lot of people see a lot of potential in this kid. I think he's going to be Im impressive at the next level. And I think he has shown that uh, to a lot of scouts. Now, in his one year at Kentucky, he played in 31 games, averaged 14 points a game, 4.3 rebounds a game, 3.2 assists a game, shot 42% from the field, just 29% from three, which we'll talk about on three and a half attempts per game, but he did shoot 83% from the, from the free throw line. Um, and I think Tyrese Maxey has a lot of scoring potential and can develop at the next level. Um, he's really a crafty combo type of guard who you're going to give the ball to. He's going to be able to run the offense. He could play on the ball, off the ball. Um, he's definitely a skilled playmaker. He sees the floor well. He's able to dish it to his teammates and get them involved. Um, he's very uh, aggressive, and I think he thrives in the pick and roll because of that. I think he would do very well alongside of Ben Simmons or a Joel Embiid. And again, in terms of the shooting, did not shoot too well this past season, but He's just 19 years old, and I think he's going to develop. In terms of his shooting form, it is very crisp. I think it shows a lot of potential. Um, I think he can become a great shooter during the course of his career, probably in the first few years. And if he does that, I think he's going to be a stud. This guy locks down guards, one guards, two guards. Um, you put him on the ball, you give him an assignment, he's going to be able to limit his um, opposing player. Now, the one weakness for him is obviously the lack of consistency. Um, he's, he's not that good yet at creating his own shot, but I think that's going to develop Belt. Obviously, I think he's going to get into better shape and get, you know, become more athletic and get a little bit quicker, especially in those um, breakaway type of situations. But Tyrese Maxey, um, he just needs to be consistent, right? Like I said, 29% from behind the arc. This team needs a guard. We need guards who are going to be able to create their own and knock down consistently. I think Tyrese Maxey has to get better in that aspect, but definitely a well-polished prospect. And I see him going in the mid to late first round. He reminds me a lot of another Kentucky guard, De'Aaron Fox. Next, we are going to look at a guy by the name of Josh Green, a freshman shooting guard out of the University of Arizona, stands at six foot six, 210 pounds. Um, and if there's anybody who I've seen that is like the next coming of Clay Thompson, it is Josh Green. And I think this kid has a long way to go and it's going to be honestly one of the steals of the draft in the late first round. Josh Green only played one year at Arizona, but in 31 games, Josh Green averaged 12 points a game, Four and a half rebounds a game, 2.6 assists, shot 42.4% from the field, over 36% from behind the arc on three on, on about three attempts per game, 78% um, from the free throw line, and had a one and a half steals 
per game. This kid reminds me a lot of a Matisse Thibel, but he's more of a finisher. He's more of a slasher. He can put the ball on the floor. It's certainly not polished yet, but it's going to develop, and I think this kid's going to be special. I'm tired of pick the best guy available. No, we don't need any more big men. We need shooters and ball handlers, and if the other guys are not on the board, Josh Green is one of the purest shooters in this draft, and he will instantly make this team better and shoot well from day one. Um, as I said, a great shooter from mid-range, from behind the arc. One of the best traits that he has, maybe even better than his shooting, is his lockdown ability. He is your typical next 3 and D guy coming up in the NBA. Like I said, similar to a Matisse Thibel, but in addition, this guy can facilitate a little bit. He can move very, very well off the ball. He's going to find his spots on the floor and be able uh, to knock down. He's a spot-up shooter no matter where you put him at on the floor. He's big. He's physical. He reminds me, honestly, of Clay Thompson and he's going to get to the basket when he wants to might not dribble a lot but he's going to put the ball in the hoop no matter what um the the things that he has to work on is pretty much being more of a consistent scorer pretty much having the confidence uh to knock down we know clay thompson right you, you know wherever he's out on the floor he's going to take the shot he has pretty much that cognition to just get the ball and, and throw it up and i think josh green needs to do the same kind of avoid you know disappearing sometimes kind of fading away passing up the big shot um, I just want to see more confidence from him, but the kid, I believe, just turned 19 years old, has a bright future ahead of him, and the only other thing I would say is he needs to avoid foul trouble. He is a stellar defender. He will lock up, honestly, the one, the two, the three, maybe even the four on the floor. I mean, this kid is that good of a defender. The next guy that we are going to take a look at goes by the name of Grant Ryler, a senior point guard out of Charleston University. This guy stands at six foot three inches, 190 pounds. He's been one of the best scorers in college basketball over the last three years. But given the fact he's 23 going on 24, and the fact that he did not play probably the best competition in college basketball, I think he is being highly underrated. He's drastically improved each year of college in most categories and in his senior year at Charleston, Played in 31 games, he averaged 21.9 points a game, 5.1 rebounds a game, almost 4 assists a game. He shot 50% from the field, over 36%, 36.2 to be exact, um, from long range on over 4 3 attempts a game. He shot almost 83% from the charity stripe, averages 1.6 steals a game, um, and the only thing he has to kind of control is his turnovers at 3 a game. Now, Ryler is probably one of the most craftiest creative type of guards in this draft and you know he's a lot different from a lot of these other prospects because he's had the time to develop he's a fifth year senior he's had a lot of time and experience to really be able to grow his game which is actually one of the things used against him because they think he's almost hit his peak of development they think he is what he is at this point uh, but I see a lot to grow on and build on I think Grant Ryler comes into your offense and he's what I label a bucket getter he's a go-getter he's going to get on the court and he's going to put the ball in a hoop. Simple as that. He's tough. He's a leader. Um, I mean, his quick first step, his burst off the dribble, his pull up. Um, and he, he really loves all these flashy packages. He loves going behind the back. He loves putting it under his legs. Uh, he loves these spin moves, these hesitations, right? Um, he's a great pick and roll handler, can see the floor well. He's really one of those leaders that you put in the court. And he knows what everybody's job is. Um, his one weakness that is holding him back is his defensive potential. I mean, he usually gets torched by by opposing guards. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, his technique isn't that sharp. He kind of gets blown by. Even though he is quick, a little bit stronger, um, he does get blown by. And I think he really needs to work on his defense if he wants to become that next level type of player. Honestly, he reminds me of a Fred Van Vliet with his shooting ability, with his playmaking, just his that chip on the shoulder type mentality. He reminds me of Van Vliet. The fourth guy we're going to take a look at is Kyle. Ira Lewis Jr., a sophomore point guard out of the University of Alabama, stands at six foot three inches, 165 pounds, and he's a little bit different because this is a guy I do not view as being available at pick 21. He's been projected in the lottery, maybe even higher. He's climbed far up these draft boards, um, and, and the star potential is there. I think he's going to get picked earlier, so this would be the one guy I would be willing for the Sixers to go ahead and package one of those second rounders or someone else, maybe a player as well to move up and get this kid he's going to be very special now in his sophomore year at Alabama 
played in 31 games, averaged 18 and a half points a game, almost five rebounds a game, 5.2 assists per game, shot 46% from the field, 36.6% from behind the arc on five three attempts a game, shot over 80% from the charity stripe, averaged 1.8 steals a game, and the only thing, again, that he has to work on um, is three and a half turnovers a game, as we've seen with a lot of these guards. Uh, but Kyra Lewis, the star, like I said, he jumps off the tape. The potential is there to be great. I see, we talked about Tyrese Maxey looking like De'Aaron Fox. This is the next coming of De'Aaron Fox that I see in hindsight. I also see a little bit of Kyrie Irving sprinkled in there, but Kyra Lewis, um, I mean, he's very long and quick at the same time. Besides being, a, you know, a great playmaker, seeing the floor well, being a crafty combo guard, um, he has a lot of finesse in his game. And he's one of the fastest guards that has been measured in this entire draft. Kyra Lewis um, can push the ball and transition the fast break. He's going to get down to court in a few seconds. And, and overall, whether it's on the knockdown pull-up three or whether it's just on a mid-range or whatever, Kyra Lewis is aggressive at the same time. He has it all. He can create in space. He can get other guys involved. And he's just going to be that smart IQ point guard um, that's going to make everybody better. And overall on this team, I think it's exactly what we need. The only knock on him is really the turnovers, like I mentioned, and the fact that he's only coming in at about 165, uh, 170 pounds. So he's likely to get plucked. He's likely to get bullied on defense a little bit, but he can hold his own, and he has shown that in college. Um, he's going to have to put on some weight, but I think he's going to do that easily like De'Aaron Fox has. And at the end of the day, Kyra Lewis, he might be one of the biggest playmakers to come out of this draft. And in a couple years, when we look back, we might think, oh, that is the guy everybody wanted to get. And the last guy that we are going to take a look at is probably a long shot for the Sixers, but you never know. He goes by the name of Theo Maladon, a point guard who is 19 years old, um, has been playing for three years professionally in France. Uh, the kid stands about six foot four inches, 176 pounds. Um, and overall, there's not a big sample size to go off, but he's one of those foreign prospects that you try to bring over and hope that they, you know, produce and they grow into their true selves here. At the end of the day, in terms of the Sixers, we have not had a lot of luck in terms of these foreign guys, whether it's Timotei Lawawu Cabarro, whether it's Dario Sarge, whether it's uh, Furkan Korkmaz. I, in my opinion, I don't want to go the foreign route because one, I don't want to wait a year or two to get the guy over. And number two, we need a guy who is, you know, ready for the physicality of the NBA and can step in and produce right away. And unless you're looking at a Luka Doncic type of player. I don't think that Theo Maldon is anything close to that. He's ve he's a very good playmaker. That is his best skill. He can get others involved. Um, he's kind of a downhill type of player. He will get to the basket. Very smart, high IQ type of player. I think he can develop years down the road. Um, he can read defense as well. Could come in and be a, maybe a bench piece for us um, right away. But at the end of the day, even though he plays with pace, even though he can knock down shots, He's not there yet. His shooting potential still needs to grow and develop. I will say, though, that he was on pace to win the Euro League Rising Star Award that Luka Doncic did win in and Nikolai Miritich. Um, so he does have a lot of potential. He's a great, like I said, a great one guard to come in and be that kind of facilitator in your offense. But overall, I think he still needs more development. Not athletic enough yet. Doesn't have the build yet. Um, and he still needs a lot more time to develop. And especially if he were to come here to kind of transition his playing style. He reminds me really of a Ricky Rubio um, in the sense if he were to grow into that role. This kid has been mocked in a few drafts to the Sixers. It would not surprise me if they went the foreign route, but at the end of the day, I want a guy who's going to be ready from day one. So just another guy to go ahead and throw out there. Maybe a long shot, but you guys let me know all your thoughts down below. We've now talked about eight total potential first round prospects for the Sixers, and these are the guys that I'm looking at. I'm going to be targeting on draft night if I'm the Sixers. You guys, let me know all your thoughts down below. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one, man. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.